My name is Rod Tataran and I'm an endodontist here in Spokane, Washington. I love aviation. That's my passion. Uh, it's, uh, it's my hobby and it's what I like to do when I'm not at work. You know, I started flying when I was 16 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm from Kelowna, British Columbia, so I learned in Canada as a kid, but I ended up getting my pilot's license at Walla Walla University in 1985. I wanted to be a pilot uh, as a career, but I didn't have 2020 vision, and that was a requirement at the time, so I was, unfortunately wasn't able to, to pursue it as a, as a lifetime career, but I did continue to fly as a hobby. I have three airplanes. I have a Cirrus SR-22. I have a uh, Icon A-5. It's an amphibious plane that goes on the water. And then I also have a Piper J-3 Cub, which is just a very small, it's 1947 aircraft, uh, no electrical system, hand propped, and uh, 65 horse, so it's a pretty slow little plane, but it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, the beauty of Cirrus aircraft is it's, uh, it's an all uh, carbon fiber aircraft, so there's no uh, aluminum or metal. And uh, as a result, there's no rivets, so it's a much smoother plane, and, and for its size and horsepower, it's a very fast plane. The Icon is just an absolute pleasure to fly. It's a, it's a very uh, new aircraft. They've only made just over 100 of them. What's beautiful about the Icon is uh, it's just, it's crafted so well. It has, uh, again, another car, it's a carbon fiber plane, so it's very light. Uh, and uh, it has a Rotax 100 horsepower engine, so it's not highly powered, but it's meant to be a very light uh, sport type of aircraft. A lot of fun, only carries two passengers. It's not meant to carry a lot of load. Just enough to go spend a day uh, to the various lakes that we have in the area, land on the water, take off again, just a fun aircraft, it's just a, it's just kind of a jet ski on wing, with wings, it's just a lot of fun. I've always enjoyed flight simulation because it gives me an opportunity to fly anywhere you want, uh, at any time you want, without having to actually burn fuel and, and gas. And the other advantage of flight simulation is you can do things in a simulator that you wouldn't do in a real aircraft. You can practice uh, emergencies engine failures, in-flight fires, and practice approaches in some very inclement weather. Uh, that's something you would never do in a real aircraft, so that's the beauty of simulation. Not only is it a lot of fun and gives you the opportunity to fly, but the, the realism of a, of a good quality simulator allows you to practice uh, in, in very real environments that, uh, again, you wouldn't otherwise do. What I'm trying to do here is build a simulator that's identical to my Cirrus aircraft. So I purchased a Cirrus fuselage. This is a plane that was in an accident and was not able to be rebuilt or restored, so it was uh, scrapped. So I took the fuselage of that aircraft and removed all the electronics and all the uh, equipment out of it, and I'm replacing it with simulator equipment that will mimic the, the real stuff. And all the buttons, all the switches, all the throttles, rudder pedals, yoke uh, will be identical to the real aircraft. So when I'm flying in this simulator, it won't be any different than flying in the actual aircraft. Most of the time when you build a simulator, it's just computer screens, a computer, and then all of the aircraft is really in the, in the computer. The, the flight model and everything is built into the simulator already. So you, it's plug and play. You pretty much like a video game, plug it in and you can start flying. But you're pressing the little buttons that are in the screen. When you convert that into a real simulator, when you actually have physical knobs, physical throttles, rudders, you have to convert those switches and buttons, throttle movements, into USB signals that will then tell the computer what to do. The other challenge too is that some of the features in the aircraft are real. For instance, there's real lights in the cockpit. There's uh, a real fan that blows air. And so uh, you have to sort of make some of the switches operate the simulator. Other things actually are electrical. They're 24 volt or 12 volt electrical systems. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of soldering, a lot of wiring that you have to uh, do to build the project. 
there's a lot of things you have to sort of uh, create that don't exist in, in, a, in a project like this. You know, for anybody that's thinking about aviation, they're young, they want to do it, I would say absolutely do it. Do it while you're young, do it as soon as you can. I think there's great career paths in it. If that's your passion, do it. If you enjoy it, if it's something you uh, want to do, if it's something that you have any kind of passion about, do it. Even if it's not for a career, even if it's for a hobby. So uh, I would strongly encourage anybody who has any kind of passion to fly to do it. You know, people throughout history uh, have dreamed of flying. I mean, thousands of years it's been written about. And people have dreamed about it. Uh, and unfortunately haven't been able to do it and been trying to do it. And here just in the last hundred years, just this little last blip of history, we have the ability to do it. To not take advantage of that, to not actually have your own chair in the sky that you can look down at the world in when it's available to you, I don't understand why everybody wouldn't want that.